Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to determine the vertices, uh, the asymptotes, as well as the foci of a hyperbola. Now, we could also find the covertices, and I might have to um, for a couple of these videos, or at least explain it. But when we're looking at the graph of a hyperbola, we notice that the covertices are actually not points um, actually on the uh, curved line of the hyperbola. So usually covertices aren't as important. But again, just like ellipses, um, all the relationships of A, B, and C are exactly the same. So I want to just kind of take a quick minute and just kind of look at the formulas to kind of show you how they're similar and how they are different. So you can see here's our two equations of our hyperbolas. Um, you can see they look very, very similar to an ellipse. The couple differences is, a couple differences are, you can see that they're subtracting. Between the x and the y's, we're always subtracting. And also notice that in previous, in previously, we always had, um, for our ellipse, A was always larger than B. A was always larger than B, because remember, A represented the distance from the center to your vertices. B represented the distance from your center to your covertices. So A was always larger. Well, we kind of need to forget about that when we're dealing with hyperbolas, because that's not always the case. For a hyperbola, it's always A minus B. A minus B. And just like an ellipse, we could have a um, it could be stretched long or it could be stretched vertical. Well, whenever we have the x is over the a, oops, that um, I switched those about. These equations are wrong. Whenever the x is over the a, that means we have a vertical. And instead of calling it a major axis, we can call it a transverse axis. So we're going to have a major transverse axis. When the um, y is over the a, that means we're going to have a vertical transverse axis. So this is kind of like our horizontal, just like our horizontal major axis. And this is like our. Um, vertical, just like our vertical major axis. Now I've miswrote down the problem, so that's vertical, so that's B over A, and that's A over B. I swapped those, swap those out. Okay. Um, the other really kind of main difference is now we're going to have some asymptotes, and for the first problem, I'll kind of show you how to graph it as well as using the covertices to help you uh, graph it, so you kind of get an idea of what it looks like. Actually, I'll graph the first two. Um, but then also notice the relationship between a, b, and c is not c squared equals a squared minus b squared like it was for an ellipse. The relationship is c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So we just have some differences there. Um, but as far as the process that we're doing, it's going to be exactly the same thing as what we did for an ellipse. The first thing we want to do is identify um, the center and your values of a and b. Now, for all of these problems, I chose the center to be at 0, 0. So we're kind of good at that, so I'm not going to write that down. But for the next video, when we have different centers, we will put that into our information. Remember, it's always a squared minus b squared. Always a squared minus b squared. So I can say that a squared equals 100 and b squared equals uh, 64. Now, remember, a, a is the distance from the center to your vertices. b is the distance from your center to your covertices. So a is going to equal 10 and b is going to equal 8. Now, to determine our distance from our center to your foci, we need to figure out c. So therefore, we need to use this equation. Uh, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. And then I'll just plug in my values for a and b. So I have c squared equals a squared, which is 100, b squared, which is 64. So therefore, I have c squared equals 164. Oops. Take the square root, take the square root. C equals, now I'm sure I can probably simplify that. So let's see, uh, 164, let's pick uh, square numbers. Let's try 36. Nope, 36 doesn't go in there. 164 divided by 16. Nope, 164 divided by 9. Nope, 164 divided by 4. It goes in there 41 times, all right? So therefore, it's going to be 2 times radical 41, because um, I can't simplify the square root of 41. Um, so I broke this up into 4 times 41. I can take the square root of 4, which is 2. I can't take the square root of 41, so I leave it right there. Um, all right, so we know our center is at 0, 0. I actually, I'll just write that in there. Now, to really kind of understand how the graph looks, and, and as, especially as well as finding the asymptote, um, let's go ahead and plot the information. So I'll just create a nice x and y axis. We know the center is at 0, 0, so I'm going to put a nice little dot there. Now, again, the distance um, from our center to our vertices is going to be 10. Now, again, we have to make sure, are we going vertical or are we going horizontal? Since my A is under my X, I'm going vertical. 
So I'm going to go to the right 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And to the left 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Vertice, vertice. Now the next thing I need to do is, uh, no, no, let's plot my foci. Yep, next thing I need to do is plot my foci. So you could either you know, approximate this. Uh, we just kind of want to know where that is. I know that um, you know, 12 is 144, 13 is 169, so it's going to be between 12 and 3. But let's just kind of get a decimal approximation of this. So square root of 164 is going to be 12.8, right, between 12 and 3. So if that's 10, 11, 12, 13, 11, 12, 13. So 11, 12, so 12.8 will be right there. And 12.8 will be right there. OK, so unlike an ellipse where we had our foci inside our vertices, and then we kind of had you know, our parabolas opening up towards it, remember, just like a parabola and ellipse, our, um, our graphs always open up towards our uh, hyperbolas. Now, you can do like a rough sketch here and just kind of sketch little parabolas going in opposite directions. And that's perfectly fine. But if you're, ask, if you're looking for something where it's to want to get a detailed or exactly defined, um, not even also even the asymptote, what we can do is use our, um, use our co-vertices. Now again, they're not points on the graph because they're going to be going vertical. But let me show you what it happens. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's one co-vertice. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's my other co-vertice. What's nice about knowing the co-vertices and the vertices is what we can do is create a nice little box by using horizontal and vertical lines. Actually, let me just. So if you use vertical and horizontal lines through your vertices and co-vertices, now what you have just created is basically a box that our asymptotes are going to be across. So going through the center, your asymptotes, your asymptotes go through the center and cut on the corners of these. OK? So now, actually, when I'm graphing this, to be a little bit more detailed, you can see that this is actually going to be opening up pretty wide. So sketching is usually fine, depending on. But if you wanted to kind of really understand the graph, remember that it's approaching those asymptotes. And that's kind of more a little bit of what the graph would look like. Now, let's go ahead and find our values. Um, Remember, our vertices are going left and right, so that from our center, that's going to be changing our x value. So vertices, let's see, we went to the right eight to the left eight, so I'm just going to do plus or minus eight comma zero. Our foci are also going to the left and right because the foci and the um, foci and the vertices all lie on the transverse axis, whereas the covertices lie on what we call the conjugate axis. Uh, the foci then are going to be plus or minus 2 square root of 41, comma 0. And then the asymptote, all I'm simply going to do is take the equation of the asymptote and plug in my uh, b, my a, and my h, and my k. Remember, h and k represent the center of, an as of a hyperbola. When these, you know, for all these problems, our center is going to be 0, 0. So I just need to plug in b and a. So therefore, I have y equals plus or minus b over a, b is 8. Um, so it's 8 over 10. Let's simplify that. 8 over 10 can be reduced to uh, 4 fifths. Divide 2 on the top and bottom. Times times x minus h plus k, so times x. And let's just kind of check. You know, Does this look like that kind of follows along? 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, that looks like that's going to follow. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And you can see that's going to create that. You have the positive slope as well as the negative slope. Um, all right, that's probably, hopefully, that gives you a good idea. Um, now for the next ones, I'm just going to kind of quickly sketch uh, the graphs to kind of move along for this video. All right, so the next one, uh, you can see that now, and, th and here's the big thing that students get made. They say A and the B. Students always get confused. They say, oh, 25 is the A because they're looking back to ellipse. No, remember, it's always A squared minus B squared. So in this case, I can say a squared equals 16, b squared equals 25, a equals 4, b equals 5. Figure out what c is. We're going to do c squared equals uh, ba -ba -ba, 16 plus 25. 
c squared equals uh, 41. And so therefore, c equals the square root of 41. Now notice, our a is on our y, so now we're going to be going up and down. So again, our center's at 0, 0. So we'll say center is at 0, comma 0. Now we're going up and down to find our vertices. We're going up and down 4. So I'll do 1, 2, 3, 4. Vertice, 1, 2, 3, 4. Second vertice. Um, I could find the co-vertices if I wanted to get a good graph, but in this case, I'm just going to sketch it like I previously did there. I'm not really concerned about the graph. I'm concerned about finding the points. So my center is 0, 0. Uh, my foci, or, uh, so let's do vertices. Vertices are going to be, now we're going up and down. So it's going to be 0, comma, plus or minus 4. You could write those out as 0, comma, 4 and 0, comma, negative 4. Uh, my foci are also going to be going up and down. The square root of 41, you notice that 6 squared is 36, 7 squared is 49, so it's going to be between 6 and 7. So 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 4, 5, 6, 7. So my foci's. And, you could, and if you want to do the decimal approximation, again, we're just approximating. It doesn't need to be exact when you're plotting them. Um, but because basically the same thing is, you know, we don't even really need to do that. We just know that it's plus or minus the square root of 41. Um, the graph is really not a part of my answer. And then the last thing is determining the asymptote, where now all I'm going to do is plug in my a and b into this equation. Notice the differences, b over a and a over b. Okay, so there's a big, that's really the only difference between the two asymptotes. Uh, so I have plus or minus a over b, which is 4 fifths times x, as because h and k are both 0. All right. Oh, and if you just wanted to sketch it, it looks something like this. Remember, the asymptotes are a part of the graph. OK, uh, in the next one here, uh, again, we're just going to follow along through the same process. I'll just say that a squared is equal to 144. b squared equals 81. Determining the a squared and b squared is pretty simple, right? Um, so therefore, now I have c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So c squared equals 144 plus 81. c squared equals, we'll see, what, what is, how can I simplify that? 225, oh, idiot, that's 15, that's square root of 15. So when I take the square root now on both sides, I get c is equal to 15. Oh, so let's figure out these. So A is equal to 12, and B is equal to 9. So this one isn't so bad. This one actually has the nicest numbers out of all of them. So I can quickly, quickly just kind of sketch this here. We have the center at 0, 0. Now again, notice how my A, right, because it's always A squared minus B squared. Notice my A squared is under my X. That means I'm going left and right from the center. So that's going to be to the right 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and to the left 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, vertice and vertice. So therefore, my center is 0, comma, 0. My vertices, again, are going left and right, so that's going to be plus or minus 12, comma, 0. My foci are also going to be left and right, but now they're going to be 15. So 12, 13, 14, 15. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So my foci are going to be plus or minus 15, comma, 0. And then my asymptote is, again, I'm just going to plug it into the equation, my b and my a. My b is 9, my uh, a is 12. So 9 over 12, I can divide the top and bottom by 3, so that's going to be 3 fourths. So y equals plus or minus 3 fourths uh, x. OK, and I'm not even going to sketch the graph, because uh, that's not what I'm asking for. All right, on the last one, you can see that this problem is not looking like anything else that we've done before, or at least in, in this video. So the main important thing is that I see is it's divided by 448. Well, if you look at the equations for a hyperbola, they're equal to 1. Or sorry, they're equal to 448. So we've got to make it equal to um, one. So what I'm going to do is divide by 448. 
And just remember, just like when we did distributed property, A times B plus C equals A times B plus A times C, right? Distributed property. If you have B plus C over A, like we do in this course case, then that's B over A is equal to C over A. So therefore, that 448 divides into both of those terms. Yeah. So I'm going to have 14y squared over 448 minus 28x squared over 448 equals now 1. So now it's equal to 1. That's good. But now I just need to simplify this. So basically, 14 over 448, um, how many, you know, I basically want to reduce this. And 14, um, that can be reduced to 1 over 32. So I have y squared over 32. Minus 28 over uh, 448 can be reduced to uh, 1 over 16. Okay, So now I can determine that my a is equal to, or let's say a squared is equal to 32, b squared is equal to 16, a is equal to, if you're going to square root that, you'd have the square root of 32, which is equal to the square root of 16 times 2, which is equal to square root of 16 is 4 times the square root of 2. So we have 4 square root of 2, whereas b, we have b is equal to 4. Notice that my a, again, is under my y, so I'm going to have another vertical one like this. To turn my c squared, I'm simply just going to do uh, a squared plus b squared. So c squared equals 32 plus 16 c squared equals 48. Again, just like I did over here, I need to simplify the radical. So uh, c squared equals 48. I'll take the square root of both sides. c equals the square root of 48. Again, I can pull out a 16, or not pull out a 16, but rewrite it as 16 times 3. c equals 4 times radical 3. Okay. So again, all we're looking into doing is determining the center, uh, the vertices, and the foci. Remember, my they're going up and down. So my center is going to be 0, 0. My vertices are going to be up and down A, which is going to be 4 uh, radical 2. So that's going to be 0, comma, plus or minus 4 radical 2. My uh, foci is also going to be up and down, right? Notice how the vertices and the foci all lie on the transverse axis. So that's going to be up and down as well. That's going to be up and down a value of c. So that's going to be 0, comma, plus or minus 4, radical 3. And then my asymptote is just going to be plugging in a and b in for that case. So I'm going to have a over b. So I'll have y equals plus or minus. Uh, 4 radical 2 over 4x, which is equivalent or simplified to y equals plus or minus the square root of 2x. Remember, square root of 2 is just an irrational number, so that would be your slope, which wouldn't really be fun to graph. So again, when you have something that's maybe hard to graph and you need to find the asymptotes, the easiest thing I like to do is create that box so you connect them. But there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is your basics for determining the... <coughs> the vertices, the foci, and the asymptotes of a hyperbola. Thanks. <clears throat>